Welcome back to Uncover Your Magic. Today you are in for a real treat. My guest is Wajid Hassan, a man who contacted me so he could share his magic on this show. I started doing my deep dive on Wajid and said, OMG, this is who is supposed to be next in my evolution and expansion so I can share his wisdom with you so we can keep awakening our souls on this journey here on this earth. His background and what he has learned along his path is so fascinating. I know you are going to listen to this episode in awe. I read his book, The Struggle for World Sanity, and was blown away. I even read it twice because it opened up so many new thoughts about our lives and why we are here and the truths of what he has learned from his greatest teacher. He has such a wide array of talents in his background and his authenticity and genuineness speaks so loud. You will be hooked the minute you meet this amazing human. Before we get this interview started, I wanted to remind you, as we begin this new year, I am having a monthly free masterclass for you to join me on Zoom with the speakers and spiritual teachers from this podcast. Go to my website, click on the link so you will be notified each month so you can join and learn from them firsthand. I have grown so much as I look back at the last 92 episodes as I hope you have, as you see how much growth we have discovered over these last almost two years. I cannot even believe I am saying that. I also have the waiting list for my two courses, Raising Confidence for Teens and The Magic Path for Adults on my website. Join me in this expansion and ascension that I am so passionate about as we live on this planet during this time. It's time to shift our thinking and the vibration of this planet. It's all happening now. Let's do it together and have fun along the way. Just go to my website, ashleygonner.com for all the course information and sign up for all my freebies I have available. Let me give you a little bit of Wajid's background before I bring him on the show. From Pakistan to England, and then settling in America, Wajid has lived an interesting and very varied life in many fields of endeavor. From a technical background as a field service engineer to stand-up comedian with over 20 years as a union actor doing voiceover, narration, commercials, as well as TV and movie roles. He also encompasses over 40 years experience in the field of metaphysics, healing, spirituality, and new age concepts. An avid hiker, he managed to climb to the top of Mount Kilimanjaro in 2006, Africa's highest mountain in Tanzania. He is a humanitarian and environmentalist, always looking for ways to improve life for people along with a deep love for our planet and all the plants and animals who reside upon her back. As a qualified speaker, healer, and teacher, he can demonstrate how to reignite the spiritual flame within us and send it outward to all, improving not only our personal lives, but those of every life stream that live on our beautiful world. This is something he outlines in detail in his number one bestseller on Amazon, The Struggle for World Sanity, which will inspire and uplift those who read it. So without further ado, please welcome Wajid Hassan to the show. Welcome. Hi, Ashley. Hi. Nice to see you. Good to be nice. on the show. Oh, so nice to see you and meet you. I feel like I've known you because I read your book this last week and love it and know that uh, that you know you meet people at the perfect time. It's always divine timing, and you are that for me because you open my eyes to new thinking. You let me see things in different ways. Um, your story is fascinating. Even you know you're just this authentic genuine soul that has this energy with him that is just beautiful and a 
you know, the way that you were uh, raised was amazing, your childhood story. So I always like to start just so people kind of get a gist of, uh, you know, kind of where you came from. Like a, what a, what a story of your family. That's amazing. Just the first chapter of your book is about your childhood that made me understand you and where you came from. We don't need to go that deep, but kind of go with where you want to start with kind of how you feel got to, you know, got to you. Wajid, how old are you now? Uh, I'm 62 now. Oh, wow. I'm 53. So we're about nine years different, 10 years. Um, so go back to when you want to start, what, when it started, what, how you were raised, I guess, would be a good part. Well, I was born in poverty in the slums of Lahore, Pakistan, and um, my, my parents, my dad was a high school teacher and he just couldn't make ends meet. And then he decided at that time they were offering uh, visas to, because Pakistan was part of the British Commonwealth. They were offering visas to uh, immigrants to come and do many work in England. And he decided to do that. So um, we didn't have the money for planes. So it took five weeks by bus and train through different countries uh, where we reached uh, England. And then uh, from there, I lived in the north of England till the age of 10. Then we moved to London, went to high school there, had my formal education uh, in England, uh, made my way up and became in the technical field as a field service engineer for a large company in, in England. And then uh, moved to Los Angeles because uh, I was losing my tan in England. I was turning white. <laughs> so I had to go to sunny, sunny California to keep yes. my tan. And then from there, I was, I was in a technical uh, as a field engineer. And from there, I started my own little business, ended up having a computer shop in Hollywood. Kind of got discovered in Hollywood in a weird way, got into stand-up comedy, which, uh, and then got an, managed to get an agent through a casting director and then worked 20, 20 years in, as a union actor doing commercials and metaphysics and all that spirituality stuff was in the background. Um, and it was only recently till I published the book that I kind of opened myself up to something which I didn't do as a profession, but which I feel is very necessary right now in this, these days with such turmoil and chaos going on in the world that I had to, um, I was inspired to write the book and to basically give your listeners a, a glimmer of hope because right now, as you can tell, the situation is not that good uh, around the planet. And so people are in a mire, people are, into ang are anxious, they're depressed, they're overwhelmed, they don't know what the future's going to hold in, in regards to climate change and the weather endless wars and economic and hatred between races and religions and it can go on but um i'm here to offer a glimpse of hope to your listeners yes and what was the metaphysics in the background you were working you studied that while you were doing all this acting when you were in hollywood yeah i mean i had to um actually i i actually met my yogi master uh, Dr. George King at the age of 16 when I was in high school in London and I uh, met him in London and that's when I decided to I was raised primarily in an orthodox Muslim environment I also went to Church of England schools uh, and read the Bible and Christian prayer so I, I had I had both of Islam and Christianity and then at 16 my life changed when I met my own yogi master and then I started following his, his concepts, his truths, his metaphysical ideology, uh, which I, like I say, uh, actually, I kind of kept in the background because it wasn't something I was pursuing as a career. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was doing my healing, just promoting healing and studying uh, through his organization, the Ethereum Society. And like I say, it was only recently since, since oh, you know, having the book, uh, publishing the book that I've opened myself up to my real interest you know all the all the other thing the acting and the tech technical stuff 
was just part of the material world but my real passion was into into the uh into the occult world the, the world of metaphysics you know the unseen and the real aspects which of man which uh we've kind of neglected over the centuries mm -hmm. you know i was listening to the story of your master um and how you know you met him at 16 and then um just even how you were drawn to him and what put him in your path that was what fascinated me and then he lived in santa barbara he did yeah towards the end of his life yeah yes and i think the whole thing about you being his you know, you mowed his lawn and how he taught you through, you know, that is that I love that story. And I loved how you told it. And I think my listeners will love that. So when you talk about like a, a benchmark or, you know, somewhere that shifted you and it was him that really opened your eyes to wait, there's more to my, this life that I've been living for 16 years, but he came to you, you came to him, you met him, you connected. Go, go to that. Yeah, I don't think anything happens by chance. The fact that we're talking today, I don't think it's coincidence. I think there's always something in our destiny. And I, I believe it was my destiny to meet my master. Um, prior to that, I read uh, a year or so before that, I read the autobiography of a yogi by Paramahansa Yogananda, mm -hmm. which, um, you know, we, we, we also come with... Um, you know, um, past life experiences, because I'm a firm believer in reincarnation. So this was, I think this was a trigger. And the, uh, the book autobiography of a yogi or back memories of India, and then meeting my spiritual master. Um, again, you know, there was a recognition that he was somebody great. And I recognized that. And uh, I, I stuck and you know I, I i talk in my book that people need to use their intuition because these days there's all these conspiracies and lies and the truth is a lie and the a lie is the truth and people can't discriminate so i tell i you know I, I tell the readers that you know we have the greatest lie detector ever built which is our intuition so we need to use our own discrimination our own intuition uh, that inner voice that still small voice within us that tells us what's right and wrong and that to me uh and and of course doing my own research you know uh you know i i you know i have to tell you listeners don't take everything at face value do your own research and that's what i did as well and i, I didn't just suddenly say oh yeah he's a great master i'm going to follow him i did my research i got proof and my intuition said, this is, this is the path that I need to follow, and which I did. Okay. So what was it about him that was intriguing to you that sparked that voice inside your head that said, this is who I want to follow. This is the person that is going to teach me or to go or lead me. Um, well, 12 blessings where he he claimed that he was a channel um, uh, where um, no less a person than the master Jesus, <clears throat> who, uh, <clears throat> you know, was alive on earth 2000 years ago. And he was overshadowed as a, as a yogi master. He could reach high states of meditative, like Nirvana cosmic consciousness. And it was when he reached those stages, he was contacted by higher beings. And through him, uh, there were 12 sets of teachings called the 12 blessings. And when I read that, it made a lot of sense to me. But part of me said, well, either he's a genius or the greatest fraud, and I had to inquire myself. And so I, I did my own inquiries. I, I did my own research. I checked into his organization. And a lot of the things to me were very, very valid, especially his contacts, because he... Um, there were certain aspects of his context that that were that were genuine. Uh, one aspect of it that, you know, um, he, he was contacted by higher beings from higher spheres, interplanetary masters from other other planets on on higher dimensions. And uh, one aspect of his contact was that um, um, they they would give him UFO sightings uh, in Australia. Uh, New Zealand, uh, America, 
now this is this this is fascinating actually three weeks before these sightings were to occur and then three weeks later those exact sightings would occur in those countries wow. so to me that proved to me that he was in genuine contact with some with these beings because it was it was proof enough to me that you know nobody can predict those kind of sightings and then those sightings occurred so mm-hmm. that was one validation and his 12 uh, blessings another validation that book? Sorry. No, that was a book. That's that was that was another book that he wrote called uh, "You Are Responsible," where he talked about these contexts with the higher beings. Okay. But with the twelve blessings, um, it's it's a metaphysical practice where you send energy out to twelve focal points, and I pro- I, I practice them regularly. I've been practicing for over forty years by raising my hands and sending out the the energy. And it doesn't diminish. And those practices, again, it's not something, it's not a book to read. It's, it's, it's a book that you actually practice. And I'm part of an organization called it. I go to this online uh, uh, service every, pretty much every day, uh, 12blessings.org. Huh. And there's people, there's people from 30, 40 different countries. We get together and we send out the light. So again, if, people want a practical demonstration or want to try it themselves, I suggest they go to that site and practice it for themselves. Don't take my word for it. Mm -hmm. So he, so he learned how to tap into these, this higher dimensions and you saw the proof you saw it. It was really true. Uh, Yeah. And again, I, I, I totally believe that he was a genuine uh, yogi master um, again, in my book, he predicted things about me, which, which I, you know, I, he later, which was later validated. Um, in fact, uh, six years before I got into acting, he predicted me, he predicted that I would be, uh, you know, I, my first commercial was a Nike commercial as, as a, as a Indian cab driver. And he predicted that six years before it even happened. Yes. I so love I that. that. That I was a that cool was story. <laughs> yes, I love it. Something about like something, you know, I see you in a taxi cab or something. I love that. Yes, so validating. So you go to, you meet him at 16, graduate, go to college. I never got to college. I, I had problems at home. Um, I, I left, I, I was supposed to go to college and I just left home. And I, I stayed by myself for a while, moved around, and then finally got back home at 24, broke, and got, in, got back into a formal education and got into uh, my, my speciality, which was computer repair. Um, but at the same time, I still stayed a member of the, of the organization, and I still continued to follow him and his teachings. And then I think one major aspect of moving to Los Angeles, I think, was also to be closer to him as well right so he moved from london to santa barbara uh he he actually moved to uh he was ordered to move to america in 1960 and so he moved to los angeles in 1960 but he would come to england on visits and when he was visiting england that's when i met him so since 1960 he was actually living in in in, in los angeles okay and uh, eventually he 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 had he had a little property in santa barbara as well which was kind of like a little um, recluse for him from the right. madness of the world uh, um when you say in your one of your chapters we are not from earth you know, so I go, I, I listen to your childhood. I listen to your experiences with your ma- yogi master. And then I get into the next chapter of we are not from earth. So now I'm going deeper to where th- this is where the light bulb hits. And I'm thinking, okay, this is why I'm learning this. Cause I'm ready for this. Cause this is where we go to the place of, you know, you know, we're living in 2020. I feel this ascension. I'm learning. I just interviewed a woman who channels the 12 archangels and we had this amazing conversation and everything just keeps ascending, you know? So here I am with you and you start talking in this chapter about, we are not from earth. I mean, I'm going to go deeper. So let's just go here. (laughs) 
Well, as a yogi master, especially the ones in India, um, um, my master was a Western master of yoga. So he, he probably wasn't understood because he wore a suit and tie. He, you know, he, would, he didn't live in a retreat in the Himalayas. So um, he was overlooked in many aspects. But uh, a master of yoga has tremendous powers when they raise their consciousness. They can like le levitate, they can go through walls, they can project. Uh, he could he could look at my aura and see my past, uh, see my present, and also see my future. And uh, he predicted a past life that I was in. And uh, you know, on a larger scale, as we have an aura which is a reflection of our pre previous lives, the the planet Earth as a living entity also has an aura which people refer to as the Akashic records. And he was able to project from his body. Uh, in full consciousness, not like not like we do when we're asleep, but in full consciousness and read the true history, not the not the rubbish that we've been uh, hypnotized and told, but in full four dimensional living color, read the true history of 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 the human race, and from there he he you know one thing my master said he said before he got on the platform of, of, of any uh, lecture, he would always make a solemn um, you know, oath before his God that he would speak the truth. And he said, if you want to learn the truth, speak the truth. And so it cost him a lot, especially when in the early days when he said he was in contact with the high beings, the man, the UFO, he, he told about the total history of Earth. He was laughed at. And people are not laughing anymore. People are a lot more open-minded, especially since science has, has, has advanced. So people are not laughing. And he said that 18 million years ago, we lived on a planet called Maldek, which was in orbit between Jupiter and Mars. And we were a highly technically advanced uh, civilization where he said robots took care of all menial tasks. And we could control the weather. We had an abundance of food. You know, the Bible talks about, you know, Adam and Eve and the Garden of Eden and the fall from the garden, fall from grace. I think they were referring to the fall of Maldek because uh, for some reason, some uh, he said that some scientists got this lust for power and exploded a, an atomic bomb. He said that was 10,000 times more powerful than the hydrogen bomb that we have on earth and completely destroyed the planet Maldek and all that's left of this, of our home planet Maldek is the asteroid belt. And scientists today are now com confirming that the asteroid belt could have been a planet that exploded million years, millions of years ago. And then as we were released on our different uh, etheric, etheric realms, uh, the earth as a, as a goddess was approached and asked if she would um, allow mankind to reincarnate on her body, which she did under great terrible limitation. She took us on 18 million years ago and we've been here since. And since we've been here twice, we've, we've destroyed ourselves again through atomic warfare. First was the high spiritual technical advancement, and we destroyed ourselves. And then, more recently, hundred thousand years ago, was the civilization of Atlantis, which uh, a lot of the Hindu uh, Vedic scripts, which are like twenty thousand years ago, talk about. Especially the Mahabharata or the Ramayama, Ramayaman, talk about you know flying objects and light beams and you know all and the destruction of civilization. And so again, in the fifties, when my master was contacted again, there was a, um, it was very interesting. It happened when, again, we started uh, exploding atom and hydrogen bombs. And there was a tremendous amount of UFO sightings at that time, because there was a concern in the solar system that mankind was not only going to destroy himself, but also the mother earth herself and there was a tremendous intervention on our behalf and a lot of the radioactive fallout i think america destroyed a thousand detonated a thousand atomic warheads as did russia and again scientists can't believe that we're still alive 
So I believe that we were saved even in the 50s from our total destruction uh, by these higher beings who are not only uh, scientifically advanced, but spiritually advanced thousands of years ahead of us who love us in a general way as humanity, not as any individual and who really care for us and want us to go back to where we were at one time, which was very highly advanced to be. That actually is our destiny. We're not supposed to be in this evolutionary position that we're in right now. We are supposed to be gods. And now it's up to us. Now with this change that's occurring with the age of Aquarius, uh, with the age of um, Aquarius and Mother Earth rising, that we again, this awakening has started for us to rise. And, you know, part of my message is for mankind, all of us, to raise our vibrations and transmute all the horrors of our past and become the evolved beings that we're supposed to be. That's our heritage. We're not supposed to be here to suffer. Right. You know, when you think of uh, time, <laughs> you know, like th thousands of years, however many years ahead are they, and we're living here, and then you go back to Atlantis, and I, I did a past life regression a few couple, I don't know, a couple months ago. And it opened my eyes to understanding. I went to Atlantis. I never thought of Atlantis and I saw it like a movie. I was just explaining that to my past guest of, you know, I see it as a movie scene as your life. You know, this is who I was yeah. in this life. Yeah. And then I saw myself so. in that life. And then I went and I saw, I felt my daughter with me. I felt her energy. I knew yeah. it was her. So i when I do that, when I had that experience, I, uh, I understand like the passions that I have now have always been in my soul. I guess, that, I mean, that's yes. how I can explain what I'm, what I kind of experienced. Totally. totally yeah. And then at age of Aquarius, we're going to, to we're, we're heading that way. I mean, t give me your, your, what you see this 2020 ascension where we're going. And if the people keep lowering the vibration and the ones that keep their vibration high. Well, um, I got to tell your listeners, actually, it, it, it's, it's come to a reckoning at this time. It's either mankind moves forward or mankind will not be allowed to stay on this planet. Uh, you know, because uh, in 1964, the mother earth received a tremendous initiation energies which was called the initiation of earth where the high being sent tremendous spiritual energies through her. And by karmic law, she's been told to raise her vibrations and to become the goddess that she was supposed to be 80 million years ago, where she withheld her evolution and suffered tremendous limitation. And that now nothing can stop that. Her part of the climate change, the, the, um, you know, the reduction in the ionosphere, the intensity, the, the, the rise of heat because of the ultraviolet radiations, um, cosmic rays coming in, climate change, all that is also, I mean, part of it is, you know, carbon emissions. But what they're not really talking about is that the Mother Earth as a living being is raising her vibrations. And this tremendous climate change is, is actually beneficial for her because in the centuries to come, there will be a, there won't be any seasons. There won't be a spring, summer, autumn or fall. There will be a temperate climate all year round, which will be beneficial for us and for her. And that's why the seasons are changing. She's raising her vibrations. The age of Aquarius astrologically is pushing mankind to raise, to be more, uh, uh, to think more on a global scale and not think about just you know himself or his family or his friends or his town or even his country but but think on a global scale so we're being pushed in a very positive direction right now and again it's up to us um you know dr king in in the 1970s when they had the oil shortage he said at the time he said there's only one spiritual energy there's only one energy crisis on this planet right now 
That's a spiritual energy crisis. And we've tried everything. We tried economic, we tried war, we tried orthodox religion. Uh, we, you know, we've tried everything that nothing has really worked. And the only solution, it's not a religious solution, but a spiritual solution. And we are spiritual beings in physical bodies. It's not the other way around. And we've ossified our auras, we've ossified our, our chakras. And what the higher beings are now sending high beams of energy to us. All we have to do is telepathically think about, think about them and request this energy. And tremendous energies are being sent to us just by us thinking. That's how that, that's you know, that's how scientifically evolved they are. They have systems that can pick up our thoughts and send energies to us doesn't matter where they are, no matter what distance, they can be million, millions of miles away. And all we have to do in these days is get this energy down through us through, you know, by visualizing a white light going through uh, the heart center and, and the palms of the hand, you know, listeners can go in front of a, a mirror and do that and they can feel a tingling coming back. It's a very solid, tangible energy. And that's the only thing that's going to, save us this this spiritual outpouring that's going to save us from the um uh from the madness uh that's um uh that's occurring right now and only those who are will be able in the, in the next centuries or so will be able to raise their vibrations to to that of the mother earth will be allowed to stay on this planet will be allowed to inherit this beautiful new age that's coming an age where there's going to be no war, no politics, no race, no religion, but just love and service. And that's what, that's our heritage. And those, you know, people like the warmongers or the polluters, you know, um, the murderers, if they don't raise their vibrations, they will not be allowed to stay on this planet. They will be taken through death to another planet in this solar system on the uh, called, scientists have referred to it as planet X to start the uh, reincarnation cycle again on another planet. So that's what, it's not, it's not a prediction. This is, this is, this is a fact that uh, my master saw in his deep meditation. And, um, and that's again, was the reason for writing the book to, to again, warn mankind and let mankind know that even in the 11th hour, we've never been left alone. We have people who care about us who want us to rise. And the bottom line is, it's up to us if we want to change either for good or for worse. What was the, um, explain the, the, what was it? Women shall rule the world. Uh, uh, yeah, I wrote a chapter, controversial chapter that women will rule the world, um, not in a political sense, uh, I think they will be custodians of Mother Earth because as Mother Earth raises her energies, they will empower uh, women who have been suppressed over the centuries by men and they won't be, you know, so-called slaves or servants of, of man, but will not only be equal, but be in many ways superior because they will have tremendous amount of power that will be given to them. And they won't, they won't be, they will be custodians of Mother Earth, and and I think they will do a, a much better job than than what men of man has done over the centuries, um, because um, again, the the the, re the release of the feminine energy from Mother Earth will empower women, and they will be in top positions in the new age to come. And when you say the new age to come, do you? say lifetimes from now do you say years from now um I, it's not going to happen tomorrow it's not going to happen in a 10 years time but it will happen it will happen and it's not only my master that saw it in his meditations but the prophets of old have talked about it uh in the, i would say in the centuries to come because it, it took it's taken 18 million years for us to reach a state of involution so it's not suddenly gonna change tomorrow although it could and you know, dr king said if if mankind suddenly everybody got together started sending out the energy he said we could change tomorrow realistically based on our mentality i don't think that's going to happen 
uh, it's going to be a gradual change. But he, he uh, you know, the cosmic beings in in one of the transmissions mentioned that there was another planet in the galaxy that was going through a similar situation that we were many centuries ago, and they were approached and asked to raise their vibrations, and and the planet responded, and he said in fifty years the whole planet completely changed for the better. So um, we've reached a stage where we can uh, our evolution can actually be accelerated tremendously in a lot of lives very, very quickly if we just cooperate with the higher. So it's a good time. It's it's uh, it's the what it's the it's the worst of times to result the best of time. And we can on a collective uh, not only raise our consciousness, but raise the consciousness of all of mankind. And that's again is our I think is I think it's our duty for the younger generation to come. That's the personally how I look at it. It's not a case of well maybe I should I shouldn't know. You know, I want to leave a legacy for the for my nieces and nephews that will, you know, come onto a platinous with this with this madness that's going on right now. Yes. Well, I have a, you know, I have two daughters and, uh, you know, I had them later in life and had done a lot of personal development and knew when I raised them, when I was going to have children and raise them that I would instill these tools, which it just was an, uh, innate to me by the time I was 40, you know, I had a two-year-old and a baby and, um, it just, that was my mission. And I knew that I was going to be very intentional as a parent, but when I look at my passion as a mom, and now it's leading into, I teach uh, kids, I do a course with kids where I teach them these mindset tools and um, empower them to believe that they can do anything. But I saw in my lifetime in Atlantis and a couple other lifetimes that I'd had in my past life regression. Mm -hmm that I was a teacher and I was with kids and I'm like, Oh, that's why I'm so passionate. It wakes me up. And I, you know, I want to help these kids so much to see life in the way that they can see it. And they can start now instead of wait till they're, you know, in their fifties and sixties and it, we need to change it now. You know, don't you, do you see what I'm talking about? Like how I see the, I totally, uh, yeah. 100% agree with that. And, you know, the, the education system is so archaic, you know, the yeah. math and science and all. I mean, ch children should be taught at the early age about the law of karma, you know, action, reaction, that you're totally responsible for your actions, which you'll get a negative or positive reaction. They, they need to be taught about that. They need to be taught about reincarnation. Reincarnation is a fact. It's been hidden by a lot of the other. Did, did you know... Um, uh, I read. I read in the Daily Express, in a London newspaper, that some Christian scholars have come forward that the that the Christian Church actually hid the teachings of reincarnation seven hundred years ago. It was actually taught by the Christian Church at huh. one time, and they deliberately hid it uh, with this one life to live in order to control the masses. So reincarnation is a fact. The cosmic beings are saying that everybody needs to know about reincarnation. You know, it, it'll it'll dispel. You know, it will it, it answers all these so called inequality. Why somebody's you know genius at the age of three? I mean, these these are all pa from past lives. And another aspect of reincarnation is that people, you know, there won't be people will think twice going to war to murder anybody, thinking that that they could possibly be murdering their mother or father or brother or sister from a previous life. And so that's one aspect of truth that, that needs to be taught to the children and to the world, you know, reincarnation uh, and, and about the higher planetary uh, beings that actually do exist on, on the higher realms and on the other planets. And, and um, you know, things like spiritual healing, color healing, homeopathy, natural healing, all these things will be taught in the new, in, in, in the new age, you know, instead of this uh, archaic medical system that we have right now, they just pop a pill and, you know, get better. I mean, that's, that, that stuff is just all, you know, money related. 
And so a lot of these natural things need to be taught as well for the, for the children, the future. Yeah. I have a, had a few guests on that have a, you know, had had a magic magic. school for kids believe that children, you know, need to be taught these, you know, psychic abilities and see their true, who they are, Yes. you know, and that's where we're going to start doing a shift. I mean, the whole, you know, I had two children in lockdown, you know, I experienced they, in their childhood as a mom, I watched this transition and I thought there's a reason for this. There's a reason that the school system <laughs> needs to show that we, that we we can sit here on a computer. They're not, you know, it does. It's just there's a change, and it felt so good, so, and I felt like okay, we're moving forward. And you know, I and I always am, you know, instilling in all the kids that I work with and my children. You know, this is all for a reason. This is perfect. This is where we're supposed to go. There's, you know, I don't look at it like, um, I look at it like trust and surrender and move with it, you know, like just keep moving and saying yes and keep going and, you know, listen to your intuition. What is it telling you? It's so powerful. You are so powerful, you know, and to yes. take those steps and, you know, we talk about the breadcrumbs and, you know, keep moving, moving, moving. And then that's when you start looking at your life in a way of you're being led by love. You're being led by your intuition, by God, by source, by this oneness that we all are you know, and then we're energy. Of course there's reincarnation, you know, we energy cannot be, you can't nothing, you can't change energy. Right. Right. Exactly. And, and the bottom line is, you know, um, Dr. King says we're only here on earth for one reason, no, not to just one reason. And that's to raise our consciousness, you know, raise the power of Kundalini to high states of level, like Samadhi, cosmic consciousness raise this inner power within us to the point where we reach that ascension where we we learn all the lessons we need to learn on earth and then move on to higher spheres of learning on other planets that's our heritage and he explained that in an excellent book that he wrote called the nine freedoms which is available on amazon people want to research that but um you know Everything else is just leading to that. So we're, we're, our heritage is to raise our consciousness. And the way to raise this consciousness in these days is through, there's different aspects of yoga, but the highest form of yoga right now is karma yoga or the yoga of service. And it's the safest way to raise our consciousness is to channel that energy through by being charitable, by helping people directly, um, by being of service. This is the essence of what's needed these days. It's not going into a cave or into a retreat or a monastery and trying to raise our consciousness, which is easy to do. It's harder to be among mankind giving service, but it's the safest way. And it's the only way that we need to do to evolve. And so the more we get into karma yoga or the yoga of service, especially channeling the energies out, we will naturally uh, raise our consciousness. It may take a little longer than the, than the, you know, other aspects of yoga but it's the safest way for us right now to evolve and again that's our heritage you know this is what we are as a human race we're supposed to be god we're not supposed to be in this situation where in certain aspects of us are just lower than than basic you know animal animal the when you talk when I was just talking to someone about angels and you talk a chapter on your book on we are all angels. Explain your take on the angels. Well, like I said, we were at one time we were highly evolved individuals, and because of the use of our free will, uh, we chose to regress ourselves. So we've only ourselves to blame. We can't blame a higher god or a higher being. Uh, it's something that. You know, right now, me, you, and everybody on this planet are in the are the are in the exact position that we that we are meant to be because this is what we've created, and so um, we can also change this mindset and become the very you know that's what they uh, that's what the cosmic masters are saying to us that we are gods, and they're saying come come and join us. They, they, like most religious leaders or political leaders. Uh, on this planet will tell you things to keep them in power they won't say come and join us and, and be our equals 
And that's what the higher beings are saying. They're saying, come and join us and become the gods that we're supposed to be. And so again, that's our heritage. That's where we, that's where we are all going. You know, regardless of how, how far down we, we involve, evolution is always moving forward. And so, so either, doesn't matter how far we regress, eventually we have to go back to that divine source from which we all came from. People call it the universe. People call it God. You, you, you can call it whatever you want, but we, we're all destined to go back to this divine source. Again, that's part of our evolution. But we still choose to come back and reincarnate because we still are here too. Uh, I mean, in my mind, it's like, you don't, you want others to learn how to love and to vibrate higher. And, you know, you have that. I feel like I want to, if I wasn't back here on earth, I must've wanted to come to, you know, keep this move momentum that, that I'm finally understanding at 53, <laughs> you know, like that would, that would be a reason why I chose to come back. Well, there, there are ascended masters that chose not to, not to move on. And they're part of the uh, spiritual hierarchy of earth. They live in different retreats around the world. They're known as the great white brotherhood, white being nothing to do with the race. But um, so some of these masters uh, do, do stay behind and they're, they're actually holding the light of, of balance for us. If they weren't there, I think mankind would destroy, destroy themselves. So they're holding some of the karmic balance. So there are higher beings who, who decided not to evolve from earth that are, that are also looking after. There's also beings in lower lower realms that also want to destroy us. So there's, again, an invisible war behind the scenes that's going on on the other realms. And again, it's up to us to help the forces of light by sending out this white beam of creative healing love energy. That's the bottom line. It's the, en the energy of L-O-V-E, the most powerful energy in the universe. And that's what we're, we're being asked to do to help in these uh, very, very troubled times. And they could get worse before they get better. But we will prevail. You know, good will always prevail over bad. Always, always has. Look at, look at all the Nazis and the fascists and the communists. They all, you know, the Julius Caesars, the Napoleons, you know, the Genghis Khans, they all fell, they all fall. They raise the power, but they all fall. They can't, they can't, anything that's built on lies and force always falls under the law of karma. And eventually good does prevail. Right. I always say that, but I always say things are always working for you. You know, I, you know, the highest form of anything is love. And, you know, when I watch, the, you know, everyone, we all have this ego, we chose to be human and we chose to learn this fear, the thoughts of fear to, uh, finally, I mean, I, you know, you think of, you look down at your life and I, you know, I guess my question to you is when you look at your life, Wajid, and you see yourself at, as an infant up until 63, do you see it as a spherical time do you how do you look at your life i mean if you say that you see that there's other you know levels where there's people that are want to get us and there's the beautiful people that are saying come you're my equal you're seeing life in way different than people see it and what i'm trying to understand so as you see you explain explain to me how you see uh your soul your human being that's here on this earth at your age, what you've gone through, why you did it and why you can, why you see the world that, the way you do and where you're going to go when, are, when you pass away, are you, have you chose that time? How do you choose death? How do you, um, are you going somewhere for a while or do you come right back into a new movie? Uh, those are fascinating questions. I'm not sure if I can answer all of them, but you know, the <laughs> physical life is just a blip in the ocean you know people seem to think that it's it's the you know it's it's the all and end of but they say that the life afterwards is actually more uplifting and again we go to the realms we deserve and so if we live a life that 
that uh, you know we've been charitable, we've been spiritual, we've helped people. Then we go to those higher realms, and and they're very Dr. King said very pleasant realms to live on, and we and we live there again. It doesn't we, uh, you know it depends on your karma or how long that you live there. Some people can live there for many centuries, or some people can live there for a year, or some people can come right back. It depends on the individual karma. So we'd really have two lives. We have this physical life, and then we leave the physical body. We change our vibrationals and go to a different realm, and we learn lessons we learn to, from there, and then we pass on to that realm. We come back to the physical realm, and it's, it's a continuous uh, evolutionary cycle, uh, endless cycle, where, again, you know, it, it, it throws away so-called national pride how can you be proud to be white or black or yellow? Because we, we, you know, we come back. If we're white, we may come back as a black person. Or if we're a woman, we may come back as a man. Or if we're mm -hmm. a man, we may come back as a woman. It's, everything is interchangeable. So there's no such thing as national pride. We're all part of the same race, just going through different evolutionary cycles, different, different experiences, different religions, different races. Uh, all again to learn all we need to learn and so you know uh, yeah I, I just feel like it was only yesterday you know that I was in in uh, in high school and life moves so moves so quickly mm -hmm. and so um, you know um, I just want to like you I want to leave some kind of legacy that I the people remember that you know well you know he did some good for some some people and that's the way you know um D dr king said you know you can put money in a physical bank but if you put your good deeds he said into a spiritual bank he says the the um the interest is tremendously high and it's pretty much guaranteed not in not only when you go to the other realms but when you come back you'll have a much more easier way to evolve than if you led a life that was selfish and self-centered so you're given every opportunity uh, to evolve when you come back if you've led a good 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 if your life has been good in a past life as well mm -hmm. so again you know it comes down the law of karma does not first of all punish you know it teaches and the law of karma is not like man's law is absolutely just that's what dr king liked about the law of karma there's no uh judgment we only judge ourselves and we only reap you know what we what we sow mm -hmm. and so we're exactly in in the position that we're supposed to be and so we've only ourselves to blame not even blame but we've only ourselves to you know to to uh to really say you know um, but the, the good thing is it doesn't matter how far down the scale you've gone, every, every live stream, there's no such thing as, you know, eternal hell and damnation. Every live stream is allowed. The door is always open, even to the most worst mass murderer. Uh, every live stream is given the opportunity to evolve uh, up uh, and outwards. There's no such thing as eternal damnation. And so uh, it doesn't matter how far down we go, we can always evolve ourselves back up. Do you see when you, there was a part in your book where you, the perfect thing was people were, it was of service and love and there could be no war. There could be no violence. There could be no racism or anything. It was this, uh, what was that? There was a visual where we had a concert or something. We were somewhere that you put me and I was visualizing everybody at this place, you know, you know, sent, well, sending white light. There's a little, 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 little poem I did at the end called Humanity, Humanity, that one you were talking about. Maybe. Is that it? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I talked about the new age to come and, and, uh, you know, again, it's, it's going to be a beautiful world. There will be no hydrogen bombs. There won't be this fear you know, right now we're being ruled by fear, by the media, by the uh, politicians, even the orthodox religious leaders. They're all ruling the masses by fear. So you, you mentioned fear, and it's the greatest evil on the planet is fear. Mm -hmm. So we can, we'll be able to rise above this fear. And, you know, uh, in the nine freedoms, the first freedom is bravery. 
will be brave enough to rise above all our fears and start evolving. And so um, another reason, again, to send out the light because it will transmute the fear. You know, the spiritual energy, the, the power of love will always, trans it will never destroy. It transmutes, it heals, and it will heal the bad vibrations, the fear, the anger, the envy, the hate. You know, there's also, you know, a, a mind belt around the planet, which has been ossified by all these energies. And so again, you know, sending out the spiritual light will transmute those energies. Again, uh, psychic, uh, etheric, uh, spiritual healing for everybody, because, you know, we're not just physical beings as well. It's a it's an overall healing balance that this spiritual energy does. Right. So you, that that you I couldn't hear a part of that, but you were the healing of the of this Mother Earth is coming. It has to. I'm, let's wrap. Let's we're at the end, but I want to kind of sum this whole thing up. I want you to bring us to a place where the Mother Earth is is reacting. Feminine energy go to that, sum this whole thing up where you see the world going and what you're going to do to contribute. Like, where do you, where do you see yourself? You know, what legacy are you leaving? Yeah. Um, the bottom line is that the future has been set and, and nobody can alter the future. Okay. So, so it's been set. So either we conform to the future or, or, or we will not be allowed to stay on this planet. And if we want to be part of this age that has that, it, that has been seen, it's not like it might happen. It's going to happen. Right. No matter, no matter how many hydrogen bombs people explode, no matter how many wars or upheavals or viruses or all this rubbish, he says none of this is going to stop uh, the new age from dawning on, on, on planet Earth as she raises her vibrations. So uh, it's and, – and also – it's been predicted that another master, cosmic master, will come amongst mankind in the future and, and lead mankind to this new age. Mm -hmm. um, and he will come openly and, de and declare his powers. And he will come openly, uh, in a, uh, Dr. King said, in a spacecraft. And he will stand tall among men. He, he won't come as a dictator. He won't kill anybody. But he will demonstrate tremendous powers, uh, which he said, the power that he will have will be greater than any of the military combined military might of the armies. This is the kind of spiritual master that will, will again be coming and lead mankind to this new age. And again, those who don't heed his teachings uh, after, after death will be reincarnated onto another planet. Hmm. And so uh, that's, that's really the bottom line. So it's up to us. Either we stay here and evolve or we or we reincarnate on this other planet and you know reenact all the horrors that we created on this planet and so um uh so it's a message of hope you know it's not a message of of doom and destruction and the bottom line is up to us as individuals uh whether we want to change or stay in the status quo yes i love it oh it's been so fun to learn so much deeper than I've ever dove before. You know, each interview gets deeper and I think, I don't know if I can go deeper. And then I was like, oh yeah, he made me go deeper. <laughs> you know, you think, and then I think the ones that are so kind of new, like yours, new way of looking at things. And I always think, oh, people are going to go, oh, Ashley, you're, where are you going in this? But those are the ones that people are like, oh my gosh, I listened to that three times. I want to, you know, I want to meet him or I'm going to read that book. I just think people are ready. You know, I just feel like there's so much more than it was two years ago when I started this podcast. I mean, I was, there was no way I would have started with you. You know, that would have been like, whoa, right, right. You know? You're 93, I think, you're episode 93. So I, I, even in the twenties, I couldn't have brought you on. Isn't that funny? People's, I wasn't minds ready. Are, people's minds are opening. Part of the great change, people's are, minds are opening. 
in the 50s and 60s, they laughed at, at Dr. King. They spat at him. They, they joked. And even in the 70s and 80s. But now things are changing. You know, in, in the old days, you used to laugh if you believed in UFOs and right. higher beings. Now you're in the minority if you say there is no life. You're like, are you, are you an idiot? Right. You know? <laughs> so these things, and also the metaphysical truths that are coming out people are opening their, their, their intuition is saying, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes. I agree. You know? Right. You know, I've, I've attracted this group that, sorry, but they attract all these people, podcast friends, you see them going, you know, you just start seeing this, uh, I don't, it's like a magnet to this learning and growing and seeking and people like you coming to me and knowing that you were drawn to me, no coincidences, you know, it's just so fascinating to watch the whole, you know, all the puzzle pieces put together and just keep going forward. And what did I? Well, inter- also, inter- you know, like, like when I mentioned the subconscious never forgets ever all the past lives, the subconscious never. So when I mentioned Man- Maldek or Atlantis to people, something clicks in them. They don't know what, but something huh. clicks. They remember part, part of them remember something, you know, so nothing is lost. And so some triggers, like for you, you know, something triggered and you had these visualizations. So nothing is lost. And again, there'll be a point when we reach a evolutionary scale where we remember all our past lives. Right. That'll be, that'll be interesting. I'm glad right now that I don't remember some, some of my past lives because it could be horrific. I don't want to know that I could have been a soldier killing civilians say, in a past life because let's face it, we weren't whole angels and yogis in a past life we you know we must have done some pretty ghastly deeds to be in, to the, in the place that we are now but when we reach a certain evolutionary scale we remember all that and we can look at it objectively and look at it as a learning experience right but, um that's why i got to be careful when you regress you don't want to go to places where you know it's bad enough just remembering this life <laughs> sometimes <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so tell, so they can buy your book, The Struggle for World Sanity on Amazon. They go to your website. It's Wajid, what, how do you, it's, it's a wajidauthor.com. Yeah, yes. W-A-J-I-D-A-U-T-H-O-R.com. Wajidauthor.com. Okay. Yeah. And then they can learn more about my master's organization there, the Ethereum Society and the 12 Blessings uh, group. So um, yeah, there's a, a lot, a lot of, a lot of things that they can learn instead of looking at the iPhone and t- checking out TikTok. Yeah, let me tell you that one. <laughs> I have two teenagers. <laughs> well, uh, again, you know, I think it's part of the part of the mind mush these days. You know, to just, uh, you know, just just to keep the, um, uh, you know, the conscious mind just just, m- m- you know musing on stuff that just doesn't make that, that that really isn't that relevant where the higher truths which are relevant i mean those things need to be need to be taught but you know hitting tiktok and youtube and you can get addicted to that stuff so you know yeah it's another aspect which i think is deliberately being manufactured to 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 again keep the children you know yes. totally preoccupied in some kind of fantasy you know Weird. Oh, I love that way of thinking. I never thought of it that way. That is so true. I totally get that. Huh? A distraction. So they can't learn the truth. Right. Right. Huh. Totally. Because they're ready. The kids that yeah. I teach, they're so ready. Wajid, they're like sponges. They come to me. I know they're led. I don't know if the parents even know they're led, but there's something that is said, go, you need to work with Ashley. And they're so ready. And, you know, my kids only get an hour on the phone because I can't stand <laughs> the phone, but I know that's part of their vibration too. And the time they came in on this earth and that's what the technology, and I, I get that part too. So I'm more understanding that, that, and when we were raised, you know, we weren't at that vibration and, but, uh, right. you know, I just, I get that, huh? Good. I like that, th- that, that let's end on that, that thought <laughs> okay. anyway. So wonderful to meet you. 
Yeah, likewise, Ashley. It was a real pleasure. Thank you so much for having You're me. You're a precious soul. You're like the sweet. I mean, it like a. I mean, when I read your energy from reading your book, when I felt your energy, it was like this. I would want to sit with you and have coffee and hang out. Like, I just would love to have, you know, you're just that warm energy. That kind of like, like attracts like. So. Yes, <laughs> it does. Like attracts like. All right. Well, have a wonderful rest of your day and a beautiful new year. And um, we will meet again in some way. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Thank you. Okay, Ashley, thank you so much. Thank you.